I am Justin and I was gone by Jeremiah Kisangao 131,000. I'm George. I was gone by Jeremiah Kisangao who, of, who is the director of uh, Gulf Manpower and Recruitment Agencies. Me ni Vicky, my Gulf Manpower Recruiting Agency and uh, Jeremiah Kisangao Mumo. Mr. Jeremiah Kisangao, yeah. are you a con? I have not caught anybody. Are you operating an illegal mm. recruitment agency? The rate of unemployment in Kenya has not only left Kenyan youths hopeless and poor, but has also pushed many of them into the dark hole of depression. The desperation of many educated but unemployed youths has even made them gullible to false schemes of anyone who promises them a job. Sadly, out of this misery, one Nairobi man by the name Jeremiah Kisangao seems to be turning millions of these young people's problems into millions of shillings. The proprietor of Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency, located at the third floor of Waters' Annex, promises naive youths non-existent lucrative jobs in Middle East and charges them mercilessly for their gullibility. I was introduced by a friend of mine and I went on, the, he told me about the agency, Gulf Manpower. Then I went on online, I, I googled the, the agency, I found the number, then I, start, I called the guy, the, now it's Jeremiah. When I called him, he told me there was a, there was a job because I needed a security job. Then he told me there is a security job in Kuwait. When I went to his office, he told me that he has security jobs for Kuwait. I talked with a Jama called Anton Mwangangi. We are near the office. I can hear Bia. Now, for an Iripe Mendico, he has six thousand registration. He has five thousand. Now, for two thousand, he has to require to repay certificate. So, he has airport. He has to pay so now for Iripe. At a couple of months, he has to pay. Lazima ulipe hiyo kwanza. So nilimpea 13,000 that day in total. And even I have the receipts. From there, he told me after two days, you should pay, uh, yani have the commission. Commission ni 120, so aliniambia nilipe 60. Nika mwambia ni pe... Commission ni ya nini na umefanyishwa interview ama tumefika hati kwa commission? Sasa, bando atujafanya interview. Anazema ndi waone uko serious na uko committed for the interview. <laughs> Unafaa ulipe hiyo 60,000. Okay. Then afterwards akaniambi even hii job wanataka watu haraka haraka so there is no need for me to He gave me a job offer uh, from uh, Kuwait and uh, the comments were that I raised a commission fee of 120,000 Kenya shillings and uh, after we struck that deal I went ahead to look for the cash including uh, uh, borrowing from friends and uh, I managed to give him the cash. Why did you give him the money? Did you see the contract? Did you? How were you interviewed? I was interviewed at a different uh, company uh, located along uh, just opposite Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another uh, manpower sourcing uh, agency. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name very well because uh, it was new to me where we were interviewed okay. through Skype. How many were you? We were so many, over 50 of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a guy who came to pick me, he's called Anton Mwangangi. Mm -hmm. He's the one who went with him to the office yeah. and he explained to me. Right. So it, it, he sent me for medical, which I did and it didn't get the results. Mm -hmm. Then after that, then he told me now you've uh, qualified. I paid half the money. How then much it, did you pay? I paid first, I paid 11,000. Mm. Then when I did the, I finished the medical, mm. then he gave me an offer letter to sign. Then uh, after I signed, then I paid the deposit. He wanted me to pay through M-Pesa, but I asked for the account for the bank. He gave me the account, I went to the bank, I paid. Then I was given the receipts, took the office. Even we met in the bank with him personally, 
you can deposit 50,000 in his account. Now I was also given the receipt. Na niko na hizi ndio sio hiyo receipt. Then nikamwambia 10,000 nitamlipa nikiona hiyo offer letter. Sasa nitamlipa plus the other balance ya 60. So nitampea 70,000. After one month he called me. Akaniambia your offer letters have come. So you come in the office with a balance of 70,000 because within 2 days, 2 3 two to five days your visa itakuwa inakuja and you'll be traveling to Kuwait. So me nikaingia box nikamwambia after two days and nipatie time ndio nipate hiyo 70000. Then after two days I went back to his office nikalipa the room bank na nikapoa receipt niko na evidence. So nikamlipa pesa yote total ilifika 133000. He used to promise that uh, once a uh, offer letter comes and uh, you sign the you sign the contract the visa comes the next day that's what he used to promise yeah okay. yeah so you gave him the money without seeing the visa yes we gave him the money without seeing the visa because he assured he assured many of us that uh, he's going to offer and even he tried to link us with some of the uh, some of uh, his uh, customers who succeeded okay. at, at that time uh, the job that was promised was for a reservation manager in kuwait so uh, the whole process was supposed to take uh, two months within two months i was supposed to have flied and i was supposed to be working in kuwait after two months uh, nothing was happening no calls were made so we decided to follow up and uh, we looked for another number from their website uh, we saw that the director's name is jeremiah kisanga so we called him through his line. He told us uh, that the man that was called Anthony left their agency. He had called them and left. So he told us that we are supposed to start the process all over again. He told me to apply for another position still in Kuwait for a reservation officer. But I was supposed to go through the whole process. I was supposed to pay the medical all over again and pay the commission fee again, which this time he said that I'm supposed to pay a total of 60,000 deposit. Then uh, when the offer letter came, I was supposed to, to pay another 30,000. And then when the visa came, I was supposed to, to pay another 30,000. But uh, the travel arrangements were supposed to be on their side. They're the ones who are supposed to pay the tickets. We did all that. We paid the medical. So when the offer letter came, we noticed that it was from a company called TransLinks in Kuwait. Fortunately, I have a, a cousin in Kuwait. So when it took longer than it was supposed to take, we sent that cousin to go to Trade Links and ask about the job. When he went there, the people from Trade Links told him that they are expecting no one from Kenya. They have contacted no agency in Kenya. And uh, they have no jobs at that time. What happened next is that uh, he used to buy time. He used to delay tactics whereby when you call him request, uh, inquiring about uh, how far he has gone with uh, the job offer that uh, you've already signed the contract. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he could not pick the phone and when he picks the phone, he'll tell you, I'm still waiting for the, my, uh, his co-directors mm -hmm. to respond. Yeah. It's now over one and a half years. Mm -hmm. When you try to call him, he does not pick up my call. Mm -hmm. Uh, neither does he for my other victims. I realized September. I realized I was in WhatsApp group. I was in manpower victims. I was like, hey, this guy has been checking me. So we went to Central Police. Upon going there, we were not assisted. They just showed us a big file of the victims. Wakatuambia, this guy, even to that day we trained to rejaribu kumtafuta, but nini zake zilikuwa zinasema akongara. For a day, akatreziwa, ikapatika na iko Hilton. When the Hilton, walipata tu ameacha simu kwa reception. Then there is another CND hapo, walituambia, shinda iko central is, kuna jamari kuwa huko anando files zake ni mkamba. So huyo akienda huko yani wakijaribu kumtafuta anampianga simu kabla hata waanze. So hiyo ndio inakuanga the main problem ya kumpata. So there is a time I reported the police told me the guy they called the guy the police they called the the guy he told them he's in Kitui and the, the police told me they will write me a letter I go to Kitui yeah. so that uh, the police can arrest him and bring him to Nairobi. Yeah. What I want now 
is uh, justice to be sought. I want my cash to be refunded back to me. And uh, also, I want uh, him to be exposed because he's continuing to con so many Kenyans, even as we speak now. Mm -hmm. In his office, people are still flooding in innocent, jobless Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We decided to investigate these claims and headed straight to Gulf Manpower offices. But on our first and second visit, we find the offices closed. From what we know, Jeremiah might have gotten wind that we are following up this story and our sources tell us that he has not been here for a while. So it's closed and we can pretty well say they won't be in business anytime soon. A week later, we visit the building for the third time. All right, so guys, we are coming here for like, I don't know, the fifth time, just to see if they are open today. Hopefully we are lucky and they are open for business. Yes. Sasa, to Merode. And yeah, they are closed. Wow, so looks like luck is not on us. It's closed. Time to give them a call now. So we are going to start with uh, Bidinego, who I was told serves as the manager of this agency. Let's see if he picks her. Huh? Person you have called is not reachable. <laughs> we will notify you when the mobile subscriber is back. Off. Uh, let's try now. Sasa. Let's try Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. Hi, Jeremiah. How are you? This is not Jeremiah. Whom do you want to talk to? I want to speak to Jeremiah. From where? Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency. No, this is wrong number. Look for the correct number. Who am I speaking to? This is Alfred. Uh, why is your number uh, registered as the contact detail in Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency? Uh, I cannot be able to know, mm -hmm. but I'll find out. I think I'll find it with the Safaricom. Have people called you that this number is registered yeah, in this yeah, company? Yeah. Yeah, they keep calling, eh? But I've seen money that has been sent to this exact number. Yeah. And it reflects your name. So I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Maybe you write me a letter oh. and you send through the post office. I'll uh, find out what is the issue and uh. I'll be able to respond uh, directly to, to them. At first, Jeremiah denies he's the one on the other side of the phone. But after revealing we have in our possession M-Pesa messages that directly links his name to the number, he admits he is indeed Jeremiah Kisangau, the founder and director of Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency. This number I'm communicating to you on yeah. clearly shows your name is Jeremiah Kisangau. Yeah. When someone even sends money on M-Pesa, Mm. It reflects your name. So my question, I have two questions. Mm. Are you related to Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency? And the yes, second... I am, I am the director. You, I'm the owner of the company. You are Jeremiah, right? If you go to the register of the companies, okay. eh? Yes. I'm registered the director. As Jeremiah, right? Mm. A lot of youths came to us mm. and told us that you have been promising them jobs abroad, eh? Yeah, you need also to have the name. You know, when you say... Um, uh, let me, uh, uh, let me quickly... I have the specific name. Yeah. yeah. Anyone, let me quickly um, give uh, you five names, huh? Yeah, like... Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm on a WhatsApp group, huh? Yeah. With over 37 uh, people... Yeah. ...who claim that you have called them. Yeah. Uh, let me just read you a few names, huh? Yeah. I have Dorcas Njeri. Uh, yeah. I okay. have Evans Munene. Yeah. I have Francis Kemboi. Yeah. I have Justice Ouko. Yeah. I have Philip Mutunga. Yeah. And the rest, I have Peter Kitei. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I have Andrew. Yeah. I also have Abenda Amos. Yeah. So as uh, all these people, mm. it's a group of people who say mm. you have conned them. These people, most of them, like Justin Ouko. Yes. Have not met them. Yes. Amos Abenga. Yes. Because the company is mine, but I run the I don't run the government power mm -hmm. because of the conflict of the interest. Eh? Mm -hmm. Now the truth remains that I don't sit in that office. But yes. when you go to the Sharia, yes, I am the owner of the company. Yes, and the reason I put my number was one. Eh? Yes, we had some people who worked in the office. Mm -hmm. They took the money. Yes. They don't assist the clients. Yes. And I'm not aware. So are you, that are you, case, are you, the whole issue comes to me. Are you shifting the blame to the people who work under you? I'm not blaming them. Yes. But I'm saying the reason why my number is appearing on uh, the website there. Eh? But you are the one who receives the money on M-Pesa. None of the people who work under you receive the money. Not the whole amount. Most of them, some of them, they are paid in the bank account, but a few ones they sent to me. But who has the access to the bank account? You. It is me, and that's why I take but, the responsibility. And who has the access to the M-Pesa account? It's it you. It is me, and that's why I take the responsibility. Yes, so Mr. Mister Jeremiah Kisangao, yeah. are you a con? I have not conned anybody. Your organization ceased mm. to be registered in 2018, huh? Yeah. Because they were complaints, mm. the same complaints of fraud. Mm. Uh, we checked your company mm. as of mm. now is not registered mm. in the National Employment Authority. Mm. What can you say about that? Are you operating an illegal mm. recruitment agency? Okay, what is happening here? Eh? Yes. We are operating as a consultant. Eh? A consultant? When you're operating as a consultant, eh? Yes. You, what you do as a consultant, consultants, you just need to register at uh, the register of the companies. Okay. Now, what we do... Yes. We, you will come and then uh, we will use another company, eh? mm -hmm. Let's say now you need a job like uh, maybe the driver. Yes. We will be able to process for you... Yes. ...through another company. Now, what we do is that we will be a consultant, but we will have to take you through... Yes. ...the company which has a license. Mm -hmm. Because already uh, already before now you travel out of the country... Yes. ...you have to get the clearance from the National Employment Authority. Mm -hmm. And you have to get a letter from uh, what is called uh, the Minister of Labor. It's called attestation. Mm -hmm. With us uh, to sign all the contracts. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we work as a consultant at the moment. Uh, how many times have mm. you been arrested? Mm. And how many times have you been charged on fraud allegations? One, mm -hmm. I would say uh, maybe they are around three or four. Okay. But the truth is, when they go to the court, eh, mm -hmm. because these people, you like you, you say arrest this somebody because he has frauded or he has a... Uh, he has, uh, on somebody yes but when the case is going to be listened by the court yes this is a civil case where we agreed with you mm -hmm. you bring the document how you pay this amount of the money mm -hmm. i get you a job okay and i normally get you the job or in case you have not got a job within uh, the specified period yes you write a termination letter yes you are going to be refunded the money on that point of refunds yeah. I have interviewed so many people mm. and they've said you play hide and seek when it comes to refunding back the money mm. after the, co uh, the contract mm. expires in six months. Mm. How many people can you honestly say mm. you still have not refunded their money mm. and you need to refund the money? Like, you know, I have a case of uh, Justin Ouko. You have mentioned that Justin Ouko. Yes. He wrote a letter and his refund was due last week. Yes. When he came, I told him that uh, we have a shortage of the money mm -hmm. because yet we have not renewed uh, our license because we are working through another office. Mm -hmm. Now, I told them that he should be able to come on Thursday. And get the money. This week, eh? You know, I'll see. We, have, we mm -hmm. have agreed with the fund in the installment of the 20. And I will promise you, like, this Thursday. Okay. Justin Oko is going to get the 20,000. Okay. The, 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 of the, the part of the payment. Okay. And uh, what I will do. Yes. I can have a meeting with them. Yes. 
and uh, I can have a meeting with them and we agree how they are going to be refunded. So you are saying it on record, eh? You, yeah, you are willing to you sit. Can watch it. Okay, you are willing to sit down with every individual that you've maybe taken the money legally mm. and refund the money. Yeah, but okay. again, uh, I would say illegally because I would say yes. That is a few challenges that happen with the company. Okay. And indeed. Jeremiah Kisangau, as he rightfully admits, has been arrested and released numerous times. OB numbers and arrest warrants in our possession clearly show he's not a stranger in police stations. A quick search in the National Employment Authority also revealed he is indeed operating an illegal business as his organization is not on the accredited list of recruitment agencies. Let me ask you, according oh. to you, oh. is it okay that more than 40 people are complaining of the same issue? Oh. Does your organization have a problem? My organization? Yes. Can you tell us, yes. does it have a problem? My organization? Yes. The only the small problem has, eh? Yes. Is only that we have been waiting for the clearance from the National Employment Authority? Yes. That is accreditation. Yes. We have not received it. Mm -hmm. I have wrote a letter to them, mm -hmm. and I have wrote even a letter to the, the the ministry in charge. Yes. As I tell you that we are moving to the court. Yes. By next week. Okay. To challenge that because now these people they want. But we but have... but your license was withdrawn because a lot of people complained about the same issue. I'm calling it about fraud. This same man prides himself as the president of East African Youth Parliament. But what is more surprising is the fact that this organization has little to no details attached to it. Of keen interest is that the contact details seen at Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency are the same numbers found at East African Youth Parliament website. In his LinkedIn account, Jeremiah states he is the president of Kenya Youth Parliament but a call to Patrick Juguna, the executive director of Kenya Youth Parliament, confirmed to us that Jeremiah is no longer a member of the Youth Parliament. Yeah. Why are the offices of East African Youth Parliament and the offices of Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency mm. in the same place? And mm. why are the only contact details available mm. your phone number? Okay, that is a good uh, that is a good question, eh? Mm -hmm. Now, what is happening, eh? Yes, is that uh, I'm not supposed to be having the East African office in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be having the office in Arusha. Okay. And uh, who who who, who, appo who uh, appointed no? you? Who appointed you, the head of Sorry? East African? Who appointed you, the head of East African Youth Parliament? I was elected, eh? By who? by the members. Um, what you need to do, I can give you the members. Eh? Oh, please, yes. And they will be able to show you election. Okay. And the returns were taken at the, the, the at the, the, even we, because each country like Kenya, yes. all the documents might be, be posted at the General's office. Okay. They are there. If you go, you see, yes. can I have the document for East African Parliament? Okay. And who is the chairperson or the president? Yes. You will be able to see my name. Yes. And the returns has already been taken care of that. Eh? Yes. Even though Jeremiah says he's willing to refund the money, the people he allegedly conned say the opposite. So it, it reached a point now, it doesn't pick calls. Yeah. Uh, he has put my mobile phone on busy mode. Yeah. You call, he doesn't respond. You ask him, uh, he doesn't respond. Yeah. He should just uh, see the lives that he has destroyed. The people that he's calling, some of them, there is a girl that uh, she had been given money from her church. There are people who have sold even the, their cows at home. There are people who have taken a lot of loans hoping that they are going to go and work and pay those loans back. All those people, they are suffering, whereas he's enjoying himself at Hilton. He's a member of Hilton. Is he really untouchable as he claims? And why has he not been arrested even after so many complaints have been filed at Central Police Station and at the National Employment Authority? Have you threatened most of these people 
mm. that you are untouchable and no matter where they go mm. there is nothing they can do to you because you know the who is who in this country that is the big lie because eh, mm -hmm. last year yes september yes my manager was arrested, Anthony Mwangangi. Yeah, and he's because out. Because of Ibrahim Wakubu and the lady called uh, Mohamed Alima. Yes. That lady, the case was withdrawn. She was already was withdrawn by the court. Mm -hmm. And Ibrahim Yakubu also, they said, is a civil. Yes. And we agreed on the way of the refund. Yes. Which has already been done. Okay. So now, at which state, if I have told you five times I've been to the court, I have been to the Liman court. Yes. And like the case of Julie Mwelu Makau, yes. Anandumu, the Anandumu, the chief magistrate said this is a purely the civil case. Yes. And the case need to go to the civil court, but yes. not a criminal court. Okay. If I was an untouchable, mm -hmm. why was I taken to the court? The only time this man is known to have stood before a court of law was in 2010 when he was accused of impersonating the late Lucy Kibaki's personal assistant in a bid to seek employment for his relatives. It is true I was arrested by the detective mm -hmm. from the CID. Yes. That was the 2010. Yes. But the truth of the matter was the same mm -hmm. that I used to work with Anne Kibake. Okay. Anne Kibake was the wife to the late Alex Kibake Murivi. Yes. Murivi and Kibake, they are brothers. That yes. is, the Kibake is the elder brother to the, 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 our former president, Moe Kibake. Yes. And when I used to call by then the, 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 the speaker of National Assembly, mm -hmm. uh, currently Lusaka, who is the PS in the Minister of the Livestock, yes. I told her that I'm working as a PA to Mrs. Kibake. Mm -hmm. um, and but that... the PS. Mm -hmm. When I had the Kibake thought was the Lucy. Oh, okay. And I think when I was arrested, I confirmed that to the to the court. Yes. I was taken to the court, and uh, by then Grace Zioka, who is the justice now. Yes. And I confirmed the same. Mm -hmm. And the lady confirmed the same. Yes. Some of the tenants at Waters' Annex disclosed to us how most of Jeremiah's clients visit the office, expressing their anger and dissatisfaction in the man. Some have even gone to the extent of arming themselves, a move that forces Jeremiah to hide and stay away from his own office. This man now stands accused of conning and suspectful youths millions and millions of shillings and even as he promises to refund, one can only wonder whether his word is his bond or this is just another lie in his alleged conning game. We, this money, we, we, not that we have jobs, we are also struggling. Some of us take loans, ask for money from people so that we can pay. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much we refund back of the money that uh, which is we don't know when is going to come back just expose out this man so that the rest of uh, my colleagues may not also get into the same because he is taking advantage of uh, the poor he's taking advantage of us to exploit us and take away our money in the form of that he's looking for us for a job my message to jeremiah if he's watching i wish i believe he's watching is that uh, he should stop conning kenyans and for those of us who have got uh, pending deals with him, he should refund us our cash because it's now clear that he's just a con like any other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me message yangu kwa Jeremiah, your time is over. And I know this is the time to bring you down. This year, out upon mtu mwingine. So many people are crying. You are there, you are representing the youth, East Africa, it's a shame. And this is your end. This year may be your end. And I bring on. Yeah, so many Kenyans are suffering because of it. As we leave Watersis Annex, the building that houses Gulf Manpower Recruitment Agency, the big question is how did an unlicensed recruitment agency operate in Kenya for the last three years without anyone taking notice? And will Jeremiah Kisangau refund the money he called Kenyan youths as he promised? My name is Lynn Gugim and this is Tuko Investigates.